Okay. Uh, so we're talking about your money personality. My guest is Dr. Kingsley Mayo. Aha! I think I have him now. Oh, oh, we are ready to go. So I'd like to welcome everybody who is joining us on this live broadcast this evening, Monday, the 16th day of September, 2019. My name is Innocent Usa, and I am the... Yes, I have Dr. Kingsley. I'll be introducing him in a moment. I have uh, uh, the pleasure to host everyone who is joining us today. Um, for a while now, we've had this segment on our program called the uh, Monday Markets on Inside, on the Innocent, Inside Innocent Minds community on Facebook. And so today, I, I have the pleasure of... Uh, uh, doing what I have promised we would do, which is every Monday we'll pick one person or two persons and talk about what they are doing in the community and talk about what they often put on the program. Well, we're of course going to be putting people who are contributing regularly on the, on the Inside Innocent Minds uh, group, people who are commenting on other people's write-ups, videos, especially. Some people just show up and post only. So we're focusing on people who are on the group to add value, to, to, to contribute, not just to market themselves, as it were, but people who are there to not just be visible, but to add value, to communicate, to post something, to comment on someone else's post. Some people just come and they post only their stuff and they get out. They want others to comment on their post. I think that relationship, that kind of relationship is not some symbiotic. So we're looking for people who are, who are contributing, and uh, that's why last week, uh, two weeks ago, because I do this once in two weeks, two weeks ago I picked up somebody. Today I'm also picking up somebody that I have tremendous respect for. I'd like to welcome him. Uh, he will introduce himself, but I'd like to welcome Dr. Kingsley Mayowa Okonoda. Dr. Okonoda, welcome on in the Inside Innocent Minds platform. Thank you very much, um, Innocent Tusa. I'm sorry for not coming on on time. Okay. I had to can you sort face of the light? I am facing the okay. light. So can you face the light? Do you have the light? Face your light. Aha. Good. Okay. Better. Yeah. So mm -hmm. your light, once your light is in your face, our guests can see you easily. You are dark like me, but your own dark All is right. shining dark. <laughs> 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 okay, so I want to talk. Exactly. Little, I want to talk about a little bit about you. Introduce yourself quickly and tell us what you do. All right, my name is uh, Dr. Kingsley Wakonoda. I am a consultant psychiatrist with the Johnson University Teaching Hospital, and I'm a senior lecturer with the University of Georgia. But more importantly, is the fact that I'm the CEO of Network Consult, where we help individuals, communities, and uh, organizations to actualize their potentials. Work, I mean, um, cope with normal stresses of life, work productively, and make meaningful contribution to their society. And so we do this um, in the area of uh, personal development, peak performance, management consulting, as well as uh, mental health promotion with okay. our programs, um, conferences, seminars, workshops, and all that. So basically, that's, that's um, what I do. Yes. Okay. Now, I know that um, when we first met, one of the issues we talked about was the fact that professionals in your field, medical doctors, psychiatrists, are not kind of permitted to get out there and be out there in the open to advertise themselves and their services and all that. But you are doing some unique work that is difficult to suppress and difficult to not expose. And uh, It's not necessarily an advert. But I want you to talk about this subject of your mental mental, uh, mental, uh, what is it called? What do you call it? Your mental, um, uh, promotion. Sorry. Your money, yeah, I think your, your money, personality, your, your money, personality, oh, okay. or something okay, like yes. that. But before you talk about yes. that, what, why did you step out? Why, why did you step out of just being a medical doctor? at the teaching hospital in Joss, where you are, why did you step out of that boundary to begin to want to interface with people at a more uh, a closer level, committed to communities and working with people and, 
and and beyond just doing some just hospital rounds or teaching students mm. at the university and stuff like that, why did you commit yourself to going out there and adding more value than the regular people that we see out there? All right. Um, I think it has to do with um, my understanding of what I believe medicine should be, actually. Um, one of the founding fathers uh, talks about, uh, uh, his name is Rudolf Vico. He said, medicine is a social science. And politics is nothing more than medicine at a grand scale. Mm. And the people of that era actually sees medicine in terms of uh, social science uh, affecting the community. And then um, when I get into the, got into the area of mental health, I discovered that um, according to the definition of mental health, it says it's a state of well-being in which the individual is able to actualize its potential mm -hmm. and um, is able to cope with normal stresses of life, work productively, and then make meaningful contribution to society. If so, if you look at that, you see, um, for the individual to be able to actualize its potential, he needs to be trained. Sometimes he needs to be you know, you need to show him his strength, his weaknesses and all that. For him to be able to cope with normal stresses of life, you need to be able to guide him through things like stress management and all that. To be able to work productively, that's peak performance. Productive work is peak performance for you to be able to work productively. And to make contribution to society, that's development. So you see that in this definition, there's nothing that talks about me waiting in the hospital for people to break down to have mental illness or to have physical illness for me to treat them. So I simply looked at uh, the WHO definition of health, which says that health is the state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, mm -hmm. and not just the absence of disease or infirmity. So putting all this together, I saw that I will be doing myself and the society a great injustice if I just stay in the, in the hospital waiting for people to come and meet me. At any rate, most people don't even know the dimensions of mental health. They don't which even is, know which the, is the next that even... Which is the next question I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you, what are the mm -hmm. commonly mo mis mis most misunderstood uh, perspectives on mental health? What are the most commonly held yes. on truths, most commonly held yes. misconceptions on mental health? All right. Most people that talk about mental health, they think in terms of psychosis. When we say psychosis, those illnesses in which the person is not in touch with reality. Okay. This person is probably hearing Nigerians that will other say people he don't, are not Kolo. He don't Kolo, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, Kolo yes. So the person that is talking to himself, walking on the street, probably yeah. being aggressive and all that. Those are the people that people think have mental illness. But I, I, I may both mm. to say from the definition that we talked about there, that yep. uh, anybody that has a brain, anybody that has a brain that can think, that has emotion, mm -hmm. can go to the drill and, and have issues of mental health. And they can also have mental illness. In fact, I see a lot of people that really, really need the help of a mental health professional, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, but these are people who will be boasting that they cannot have anything to do with psycho, psycho mm -hmm. people. You know, they make jest, they make fun of it, and Absolutely. all that. So there is a great misunderstanding and misconception about the issues of mental health and mental illnesses on a general level. So I, I, I believe that the best we can do is to actually change the narrative let people understand and have a good grasp of what mental health and men what mental illnesses are uh, encompass. It will, it, will, it will surprise you to know that for someone who finishes from the university, is not able to get a job, and is not able to do any meaningful business and all that, that person cannot really be said to be mentally healthy because there are potentials that are there, line dormant, that is not able to realize or actualize or probably even so, the person who has a business or has a job but is not maximizing their being there is unhappy about their outcomes and their results and they are weighed exactly. down by the by the fact that they're experiencing stagnancy exactly so all these are the dimensions that we are putting into it so we're not talking just in terms of Colo. illness now we're talking in terms of wellness going beyond illness. So if people are ill, we restore them back to health and then take them beyond just return back to health, to wellness. Mm. So that's the basis of what we do. 
Okay, yes. so I'll ask you one more question before we talk about uh, our main issue. The other question would be, um, in this whole issue, uh, with what you do, with mental health, with, with all of this, um, I, I mm. noticed that people are out there and people are going through challenges regularly. But when mm. people hear the term psychiatric doctor, they think, oh, and you started to touch mm. on that. What are the misconceptions mm. generally about the area of medicine called psychiatry? Because what I do when I recommend people to psychiatrists every day, and I see this look of, what do you mean? Are you insulting me for recommending I see psychiatrists? Mm. I've recommended some people to you. Some of them are my dear friends. Some of them are family members. Mm. I brought them to you. Mm. And it's not because I thought they yes. were mad. It's because I knew mm. like, they had challenges, stress issues, mm. at work, family mm. issues issues with childbirth, issues, all kinds of issues, you know. What, yes. is it, what is this thing about psychiatric doctors that people are afraid of? Because I see people with anger, and I say to them, go see the psychiatric doctor, and they think I'm insulting them. Mm. I see somebody with mm. um, uh, issues, they come to me, they say, because they, they easily come to us because they believe we are coaches, we are uh, neuro-linguistic mm. programming practitioners, and there is no stigma mm. attached to it. But why is this yes. stigma thing with psychiatry and psychiatric doctors? What's the problem? Why? Because somebody's listening and watching this right now, they need to get educated. I seem to have lost Dr. O'Connor. I seem to have lost him. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. I think he'll join us shortly. I'd like to thank you, Ocheta Machi, for joining us. To Lucy Dobe Francis, Ashimo Lowo, Ademuiwa, Donald Oba, Makarios Uchi, Maye Okun Adeoti, Podium Aboy de Cole. Moses Datongem, Comfort Success, Ibu Konla Adebayo, um, Miles Stanley, Lenka Gowong, Bella Victor, Igocha Andrews, quite a number of people joining us on the broadcast this evening. I seem to have lost Dr. Mayowa O'Connor. I hope he joins, he rejoins the conversation. Doctor, I've lost you. If you're watching, I've lost you on this conversation and you need to rejoin. Just do the same thing you did earlier. Request to be added. Okay. All righty. If I lose him, I may uh, request. Having somebody else like uh, Podium, a boy of join us. The friend of mine who is based in the UK, based in Nigeria. I like to probably talk to her. Good. I have the talk another back. Good, 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 good. Uh, while the talk another comes on board, if you are still on the conversation, I may would like to get your comments later on the show. Remember to leave your comments if you have any for Dr. Canada. Remember to leave your contributions. Remember to also uh, ask any questions you may wish to ask. Also, if you will, I would appreciate if you leave a comment in the comment section saying, I'm watching from, state your location. Uh, state your location, ask your question. If you, even if you don't ask a question, just leave a comment there and encourage us. I am watching from, I am watching from. That would be great. Oh. Uh, welcome back, Dr. O'Connor. Yes, Thank so you. you're talking to us about the, the misunderstanding of psychiatry and psychiatric doctors. Yes. I think that basically that misunderstanding is coming from the point of view of the psychotic illnesses, like I was saying. Yes. What our people like to call madness, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you see people talking to themselves, people who are aggressive, people who are hearing voices other people are not hearing, and they respond to those things, you know, the abnormal behaviors and abnormal beliefs that people have that affect them and affect their loved ones and all that, that makes people to be afraid. Usually, what people don't understand, they're afraid of. And mm. then in our culture, because of the fact that um, mental health or uh, mental illnesses are linked with cultural um, biases, what do I mean? The manifestation of those things. For example, somebody can have the same illness in USA as somebody has in Nigeria. However, the manifestation will be colored with their belief system and mindset. So if somebody in the US says that um, the people are against him, the FBI is after him, the mm -hmm. CIA is monitoring him, mm -hmm. but the person in Nigeria is likely going to say um, witches and wizards are after him, 
um, they want to kill him, is uh, drink, taking things in the dream and all that stuff. So now when those things occur, people believe that, oh, these things are spiritual. Mm. And so they, 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 they don't know the um, biological basis of it. But that's mm -hmm. what we have studied. And yeah. we see that um, a lot of times when we give people medication, they get well. And I tell people, people can't get well if it is spiritual. They can't respond to medication. Medication will not cure spiritual things. So, mm -hmm. you see, that, that, um, the abnormal behaviors, the aggression, the, um, mis I mean, the, the, the cultural basis, witchcraft and all those kind of things that are linked to it, is why people stigmatize it a lot. They usually don't think, they don't believe that it's a mental, um, I mean, it's a, it's a medical issue. However, is it not possible to solve this challenge by introducing somebody just uh, Ashimolo Ademu Iwa said, how can we put basic knowledge of mental health issues into GNS courses? These general knowledge courses at the introductory level in the universities or in other tertiary institutions. Why are we not, we're talking about mental health, but, you know, the people who are responsible for curriculums. Mm. Why don't you push this into, uh, into the, introductory, whatever, not just for medical people, just for so people can understand yeah. mental health. The, the challenge Especially, is Especially, you know, with the, the, with the rates of suicides that are just prevailing that are uh, presently. Yes. yes. The, the challenge is that the people at the ends of affairs, you know, people who make policies and all that, they are also affected by these belief systems. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it's men, most of the time, it's very difficult to change what somebody has been, has believed for a long time. Um, one of the most difficult things to change is mindset, really. Especially if it is... Uh, tinted with um, spirituality, as we call it in our own um, environment. So yes. when somebody believes that it's a spiritual thing, how do you come and uh, disprove somebody's uh, spiritual beliefs as it were? <laughs> so, but, but already, as you can notice, the conversation is um, leading with uh, mental health issues now these days, almost yes. on a daily basis. Everywhere. Um, in churches, yes, exactly. in the marketplace, exactly. with professionals, with whatever. Okay, let's exactly. quickly go before we go to the main issue. What is this whole issue about your money personality? Yes. I'm not talking um, about the know, event yet. I'm just wondering, generally, yes. somebody's watching right now, you're saying you want to talk to them yes. about your money personality. As a layman, what do I need mm -hmm. to know about my money personality? No, the truth of the matter is this. Um, is um, Tony Robbins, um, he says it almost all the time. Yeah. That um, for, for you to be successful in any area of life, um, it depends, 80% of, of it is dependent on your psychology of that area. Yeah. And it's only 20% that is dependent on the mechanics. The now, the question is this. We can have two people, or the knowledge, yes, that's yeah. the technical knowledge. Technical, so yeah. we can have two people now who are coming out of school at the same time Let's say they have the same circumstances, yeah. but of course they have different belief systems. So one, and then they get the same kind of job, earning the same amount, but you see that one can go on to have a steady income and build a dynasty, while another one continues to struggle with money for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. So what is causing that? It is their attitude to money, their inherent um, deep-seated belief system about money. And then their personality type in terms of money. What do I mean? Okay, what makes somebody hear about an opportunity and then immediately quickly logging into it without even doing a background check? Mm -hmm. Or another person does a background check, but at the same time continue to, to, to think about it over and over, what we call analysis paralysis. Okay. And he never got to, to take a step towards doing it. Or what makes another person do a background check and then log in at the appropriate time and then do all that it takes to be able to get the best out of that um, investment. So these are some of the things that, that make us look at it that, okay, there are certain things, maybe from your people's background, from their, um, from their um, experiences that they have, um, that have witnessed in the past, the, the attitude of their parents to money, the, uh, or then the, their own, um, what I call belief system in terms of mentality, ability yeah. to take risk or ability not to take risk, 
you know, um, what, what is it that money is solving for them? Is yeah. there an underlying psychological need that they are using money to cover up? Is there a deep-seated self-esteem issue? You understand? So yeah. all these things yeah. will be able to make people know their relationship with money. There's a relationship with money. And then from, from, from research that have been conducted, we see that there are a number of um, personality types. Just like we have different temperaments, you have different personality types yeah. in terms of um, yeah. living and all that, then it's the same thing. So one person goes to a car stand, for example, and then he sees, sees a car that has all the features that he needs. Mm -hmm. And um, after one or two conversations, he writes a check and gets the car, even without thinking that he was going to buy a car before. But another person that needs a car takes up to six months before he can make a decision and then write a check to buy his own car. Yeah. So these are some of the things that make us. And you know, the way people um, make those decisions will determine if they can actually become successful in terms of money, have a, a, an anxiety-free relationship with money, or they will be anxious for the rest of their life, never actually having a grasp or a grip of their emotions when it comes to money. So now the, the, the understanding of where you stand in terms of your relationship with money, your yeah. personality concerning money, will be able to make you know what, even looking at the career that you need to pursue to be able to make money, the investment that you can do to be able to make money and all that. And then you will now see that people can have a wholesome or an awesome relationship with money and then be comfortable even on, go on to become as rich as they want to be, really. Mm -hmm. So that's the concept of that money personality thing. Okay. Um, you have an event that is coming up quickly before we go. Uh, on yes. uh, October the 1st. I know that you have done this October 1st event consistently for a couple of years now. Tell us about this event yes. and why you are doing this event. Then other All right. So, the yes. so on October 4th, we know that that is the day that Nigeria marks our independence. And uh, what I discovered over the years is that there are a lot of jamborees and celeb celebrations. Even people go to churches, wear green, white, green, and all that. Some actually will, will actually complain as well about how government has not uh, fared well. They go through memory lane concerning how... Uh, uh, what they call the good old days. <laughs> yes. But next... At the end of the day, we go through the drill almost on a, on a daily, I mean, on a yearly basis, and nothing changes. So we thought of it that, okay, the best thing to do, you can't change the world if you don't change yourself. So let's look at it and see how we can change ourselves and change our situation. Now, we also know that money is one of the things. People will say, that's part of the erroneous belief. They say money is the root of all, of all evils. However, mm -hmm. that scripture says that the love of money is the root of all evil, not money. So yeah. now we say, okay, what makes people value? If somebody values you now and they want to reward you, it either it gives you some love sum in money or uh, convert that to something that you value, but it has to be with money as well. So yeah. money is an integral part or a, a universal way of, of um, valuing people of putting values on people. So we said, okay, let's have an awesome relationship with money. Let's do this financial independence and wealth creation thing so that people can be free, at least be able to live a life of abundance that they deserve. So that's why we started this in 2013. We have been doing this since 2013. And, um, and um, we have different teams every year, but definitely this year, we thought the best thing to do is to look at your man, money personality. And so on the 1st of October, 20, um, 2019, at our Jaws. office in the city of Jos, yes, at our office at um, Network Consorts Limited, opposite mining quarters um, by Nello Junction, by Nello Plaza, we are going to have this event. It's a six hour straight on, 10, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., okay. where we are going to be sharing the dynamics of money in terms of the personality that different people have and their relationship with money. So the strengths and weaknesses of those personality types, and then how people can 
catching on the strength of those types and then the and then of course minimize the weaknesses of those types the kind of investment or career and the businesses that is best suited for each personality type so that they can um, actually profit from it so um, that event is um, going to be 10,000 era only and that 10,000 era of course um, you benefit the the the, the knowledge the, that can change your life, definitely. Of course, there's going to be launch. There's going to be training materials. And then there's going to be um, 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 certificates that will be given to you or the, that you have gone through that training. And of course, uh, you become one of our tribe. We are going to be able to help you um, on your journey with money. But more importantly, for, the, for anybody that registered before the 28th, of this month will be entitled to one of our our freebies or bonuses okay. um, for the first eight people they're going to have what we call the stress management bundle which consists of two video cds and two audio cds um i yes um, that stress management theme is one of the things that earned me the most in terms of one single long sum of money that i have been, been paid over and over concerning my speaking engagements, and then on a cumulative level. And uh, almost on, the, on a yearly basis for the past five years, I've been having that stress management thing for senior executive um, course participants at the National Institute for Policy and Strategy Studies in Kuru. So, and I know they pay me hundreds of thousands for some of those things. I'm giving it to the first eight people for free. Oh, fantastic. First, okay, I'm so glad that people are watching the, the events. Yes. If they want to enroll, what's the next step for them to do? Somebody's watching this or they watch oh. this uh, broadcast later on tomorrow or any other time before that day. Yes. What do they do? I know you put a message on our Monday market segment on this. Yes. So they can go to the Monday yes. market segment. Can you also in the comment section of this post, of this video, in the comment section, repost details of the event like you did in the Monday market segment? Yes, I will definitely do that. Okay. I will definitely do that. Oh. Uh, yes, so that um, you just go through the link and then they register, make their payment, and that will be it. Uh, yes. Fantastic. It's been nice having you, Dr. Mayo Akunada. Make sure that you go off. You, you go off the chat so I'm able to re invite somebody else to join us. Uh, I was in Jobs right. a few days ago. Unfortunately, I was too busy to, to see you. I hope to be I, I coming. Saw, I saw the yes. Okay. I hope to be coming again soon to work with uh, some people at the minor seminary very shortly. We're putting together that event already, and uh, I'll also be going to Bauchi to do something. So I hope to see you and my many other great friends in the city of Jos. Thank you for the amazing work that you do. And by the way, my regards to your wife. I'm told that she met with my wife at the airport recently. <laughs> my regards to your amazing, Thank beautiful you wife. Much. Thank you very much, Innocent. Thank you yeah. very much. All right. Yes. Remember to go off the chat. Thank you so much. I'd like to appreciate yeah. um, Ashimolo Ademuiwa who has been on the chat. I'd like to appreciate um, Akande Itunu who is watching. Uh, who else is watching? Please let me know where you are. And uh, Muiwa, if you're still on the conversation, maybe I am going to invite you later. But podium, podium. Aboye uh, Adekul, are you still here? If you're here, please let me see your comments so I can bring you on camera. Are you still here? Thank you for joining us, Bella Victor. You got your Ambrose, Lenka Gowang, Stanley, Stanley Miles, uh, Moses Tatoin of Ibukola Adebayo, uh, Comfort Success, uh, Mayo Kun Adeoti, Macarius Uchi, da -da 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 -da, Donald Oba, Ocheta Matthew. Tolusa David, uh, Michael Solomon, Malik John Odiba, my good friend Akujiha, Sandra, God's Power, alias the Queen Mother, Anya Rachel, uh, and everybody else. Okay, Ashimolo Ademuiwa is asking the question how much is the CD on stress management? I'm in Lagos. I'm hoping that Dr. Okonada will see this comment and will hear me talk about it and answer in the comment segment. Now, what I want to do is to go off this video so I can come on another video and you can join us. I'm hoping to have conversations with uh, two other people, I think Podium and Ashimolo Ademuiwa. So I want to 
ask your friends to join us in the conversation. Ask your brothers. Ask many people who are out there to join us in the conversation. I'll put up this video and then I'm going to start a new video. Ensure to rejoin us and let's know where you are watching from. Oluwa Tosin Chidubem Ade Oshun. This is um, like Yoruba and Igbo name. Interesting. Uh, so join me in the new video. I'm going to put this off and uh, ensure that uh, you join us in the next video. Um, I'll, be, I'll be on with Ashimolo Ademuiwa later on. But for now, if you are there, podium, Aboyedeko, where are you? I'd like you to join us so that we can have a short, brief conversation with the next two people. Thank you for being a part of this. I am still on. Uh